for wasted what? Opportunities and and what? Neglected privileges. Let me back this up. The experience which would have helped them in this emergency, they have neglected to, neglected to obtain, and their souls are burdened with remorse, with remorse and west, wasted opportunities. Uh, their experience, which would have helped them in this emergency, they have neglected to obtain. You get the point. We have now the opportunity to prepare and to share freely. Share with those who are in great need. Their souls, uh, let me see, uh, and neglected privileges. Okay, you can go to the next one. So now, how is this? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you a question. Can I ask? I, obviously, I've asked enough questions. So let me ask another question. How is a person saved? Okay, accept Christ. What did you say back there, my sister? I, I heard some faith in Christ. Okay, Pastor, did you say something? Believe in Christ. Okay, surrender ourselves. All of you are correct, and give testimony. But let me tell you something. There's an even more direct and simple explanation. In fact, it's not even an explanation. It's a biblical truth. We're going to to our next passage. Going to our next one. Notice, notice what it says here in Romans 10, beginning in verse 9. Notice, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Simple. If you declare with your mouth and believe with your heart. What does that look like? What does that look like? For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So you must profess your faith. You must proclaim your faith. In other words, the equation for salvation is this. Believe, call on the name of Jesus. Believe in His name and profess, proclaim it. Share it. That's the equation for salvation. It's not complicated. It's not trivial. It's simple. But pastor, I'm not a preacher. I'm not asking you to preach. Pastor, I'm not in order. I'm not asking you to say, to, to get up here. You, not a lot of people have the gift of getting up and preach. I don't have the gift. I pray for the gift. I beg God for the gift because it's my job. It's my job. I depend on it, you know, not just be, but for my livelihood, but for my own salvation. Let me tell you something. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I am in ministry, not merely to seek and to save the lost. I'm in ministry because it's the only way God can save my knucklehead itself. That's just the reality. God knows me. He knew me and he knew he had to thrust me into ministry because if you knew who I was, you wouldn't even have me in this church. If you knew where I come from, and if you knew what I've been at, where I've been, you would be like, Pastor, you can never, ever, 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 you, I will never. In fact, Pastor, you're fired. <laughs> but for the grace of God, amen? amen. Continuing. Verse, uh, notice what it says. Uh, verse 11. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all who, and richly blesses all who call on Him. Now notice verse 13. Notice. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. Everyone. Your neighbor. Your co-worker. Your, the, 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 that that tattoo-riddled uh, 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 gas station attendant. That little, that little uh, uh, gangster that walks right in front of your house. All those homeless people. The people at Home Depot. The people at the bank. Everyone. Even Putin. If Putin repents and calls on the name of the Lord, he too will be saved. Do you believe that even... Anyone? 
Everyone. How about Francis? Pope Francis. Him too. Him too. Every single one of them. Whosoever includes everyone. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why when we pray, listen, when we say in Jesus' name, that is not some hocus pocus. That's not just some, some, some formulism. No, no, we pray because it's in Jesus' name that we can look forward to have our prayers answered. How many, I could tell, I, I could just be here a week just telling you about answered prayers because they were prayed in Jesus' name. There's power. I love that old Sandy Patty song. You know, there's power. In the name of the Lord. It's power. Notice. How then can they call on Him in the one in whom they have not known? Notice. And how can they... I'm sorry. It says, uh, verse 14, how, how then can they call on Him on the one in whom they have not known? I'm sorry, believed. And how can they believe in the one... Of whom they have not heard. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are those that bring good tidings of great joy. How beautiful it is for those that share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. I guarantee you there is at least one person in the sphere of your influence that God wants you to reach. There's at least one person, I don't care how old or how young you are, here to this morning. If you can understand my words, if you can hear what I'm saying, there is not one of you that doesn't at least have one person that God has placed into your life, has brought into your sphere of influence for you to be a sentinel of hope. For you to share this great this great deliverance, salvation that God has done in your life. So that your testimony becomes an irresistible fragrance to them. So that they now will say, well, I need what you have. I want that which you're experiencing. I want to know this God. I want to serve this God. In fact, our lives should be of such a, such a testimony that people would be willing to join us and be willing to die for Jesus. Isn't that what Revelation 12, 11 says? And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. And they did not love their lives even unto what? Death. Are you willing to die for Jesus? I'll tell you what, I'm not. I'm serious. I'm going to be, I'm going to be frank with you. I'm not. I, 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 I can identify with, I want to be, okay, let me give, let me, let me, let me, let me I want to be willing, but that's not something that is inherent in me. I don't like pain. About three weeks ago, I had a kidney stone right here. Anyone ever have one of those? Oh man, I wished I could, I, I wanted to die. It is the most incredible, excruciating pain any man can experience. Okay. It was so incredible. My wife, God bless her soul. I'm grateful I have a nurse for a wife. But let me tell you, even her nursing, I mean, she was massaging it and that helped. It did, baby. It did. Beautiful. I really appreciate it. But I still wanted to die. It was not until they gave me a cocktail of trim, no, Toradol and Dilaudid. Any nurses or doctors here, you know what I'm talking about. They drugged me up real good. Mercy, it, it, I needed it because I wanted to die. Let me tell you something. I hate pain. I get a paper cut and I'm like, baby, kiss it. No, <laughs> I don't like pain. I'm serious. I mean, I know some of you men are, are um, you know, pain. You know, okay, Tim Allen, no problem. Home improvement for you. You're okay, no problem. Me, I hate pain. Any men with me? I'm alone, okay. <laughs> so, so Dwight L. Moody once was preaching on martyrs of the faith. He was talking about how 
people in the dark ages were willing to give their life for Jesus and how many of them died at the stake, died being fed to wild beasts and many of them were, were just killed mercilessly. And at the end of the message, he was at the end, uh, at the, at the end of uh, uh, the, uh, at the foyer, the end of the church, as he was shaking people's hands as they were leaving. And there was a little child that came to him and, 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 and asked him a very intriguing question. Little guy, kid, he's this is probably 10, 11 years old. He looks at him straight in the eyes and says, Pastor Moody, are you willing, are you ready to be a martyr for Jesus? And Pastor Moody was not prepared for that question. It caught him off guard. He had to think for a little bit. And then he kneeled down on one knee right at eye level with this young man. And he said this, and I love it. He said, no, young man. To be honest with you, I'm not ready to be a martyr for Jesus. But if Jesus calls me to be a martyr, he will give me the faith of a martyr. You see, we don't have to worry about how we will respond in this situation and that situation. All we need to be convinced and, 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 and completely persuaded of is that we're going to follow him no matter what. Amen. We're going to do what he asks and go where he calls and be who he wants us to be in his power and through his grace working in our hearts. Amen. That's what we need to have settled and, com and conv convinced in our hearts, in our minds now. Before the time of trouble comes, before the difficult time comes, we need to fortify our hearts and our minds with the Word of God. We need to trust Him. We need to test Him. We need to try Him and see that He is trustworthy. We need to know without a shadow of a doubt, He is faithful in all things. That's why we need to have a life of faith. Okay, I got to finish. I got to finish. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Go, go past the next one. Now, there is a, a very important reason why you and I are called to testify. And it's not just to share the gospel. It's not just to let others know of this great truth. There's something very important. And in fact, I would say vital, essential, critical, indispensable, unavoidable. And you'll find it in Desire of Ages. Page 142 says this. God could have reached his object, uh, saving sinners without what? Our aid. What does that mean? He doesn't need us. He doesn't need you to tell others about his love. He could easily do it himself. He could commission angels to do it. He could take over the, the internet and the airwaves and satellite and television and radio and everything that, that everyone heard all simultaneously would be him telling him, fear me and give glory to me for the God could do amazing and miraculous things for everyone to know of his love and grace without you and I inter intervening. Because every time we generally do, we mess it up. Sorry, that's just I'm being vulnerable. That's what I've done. I've messed it up many times. It says this, God could have reached his objectives in saving sinners without our aid. But in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. In order to enter into his joy, the joy of seeing souls redeemed by his sacrifice, we must participate in his labor, labor for their redemption. You see, in order for you to be more like Christ, you have to actually be like Christ. Think about that. In order for you to be more like Christ, you actually have to be like Christ. What was Jesus' ministry? His ministry was to seek and to save the lost. Serve. It's true. It's service. I'm not saying you and I need to go out there and stand on the corner with a bullhorn and start to 
preach the third angel's message. Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And, uh, oh no, the third angel's message says, and, I th heard an uh, and the third angel followed them, saying in a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without measure into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Whosoever worship the beast and receive his mark, here is the patience of the saints. This is what God is calling you and I to possess. Patience. Here is the patience of my saints there in Santa Cruz. Here are they which keep my commandments out of love. And have the faith of Jesus. That's another sermon. I'd have to come back to preach on the faith of Jesus. Alright. I, I, I still got an hour and a half. Alright, let me... Friends, Jesus is coming, and He's coming for those who keep His commandments, not in order to be saved, not in order to gain His favor, but because they are saved, they are just law-abiding citizens of heaven. Amen. They just do the things that in heaven we do. They have possessed the character. In fact, look, there's a, there's a passage in a book called Christ Object... Um, that's the book. Oh, you guys know it. Good. It's around page 69. It says this. Christ is waiting with longing desire the manifestation of, his, of himself in his people. When the character of Christ is perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. When the character of Christ is what? Perfectly reproduced. Okay. Let's, that word perfectly. Do we all understand what that means? Let's, let's, let's put, let's, let's put a percentile, let's make perfectly, instead of perfectly, let's put a percentage. What percentage would perfectly be? Are you sure? Not a 90%? Come on, give me a 10% discount, please. I'm kind of Jewish, okay? I, I like discount. There is no discount. You and I are called to reflect the character of Jesus perfectly. And the only way we can do that is by beholding Jesus, by walking with Jesus. Jesus says, if you do these things, no, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. God is calling us to rise to a higher ground. He's calling us to rise, to, to raise our spiritual life to a new height. He's calling us to prepare. He's calling us to prepare a world for the greatest event in universal history. There will, I, I can't say there will be a greater event in the future because I don't know what eternity holds. I have no idea. But I do know that there has never been, in, her, in eternity past, never been a more glorious event than the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And friends, you and I are called to prepare a people for that great day. Friends, it's time. It's time for us to realize. It's time for us to do. Sweetie, go to the next one. It's time for us to stand and wake up. Next one. There we, there we go. Notice what it says. In Romans 13 and verse 11 says, And that knowing the time, that what? When? Now is what? High time. Now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Friends, we are closer to Jesus' second coming more than ever. I don't know if you've realized, but the world is going downhill real quick. I mean, real, real quick. Let me give you just a, a, a synopsis, okay? You talk, you, 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 you just name what area of society, what area of world. If we're talking about politics, isn't it, today is more corrupt than it's ever been. Okay? You're talking about finances. We're on the brink of financial collapse. If I had time, I'd tell you about the FedNow system and about the beast, CBDC and, and many of the things that are taking place. Uh, the BRICS, the threat that, that the United States and the Western world has with a lot of the things that are going on in the economic world. I mean, I'm not, I'm, li listen, there are some very serious things taking place. Do you know what the BRICS is? 
Uh, I don't got time to get into that, man. I don't got t- Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, all right, Jesse, you're, you're, you're exactly right. There is oil connected to that. Okay. The BRICS, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Okay. This is a, up until recently, the U.S. dollar has been, uh, everything globally has been paid in dollars. The petrol, fuel, all countries pay OPEC in U.S. dollars. That keeps the U.S. dollar as the global dominant currency. Well, that's being challenged, and it's looking pretty, pretty ominous for America. Okay, this is what's happening recently. You heard that, Sa- that China was ab- able to broker a deal between Saudi Arabia and who else? Iran. I don't know if you guys know. Okay. It's significant, Pastor. What, what, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you what that is. You got Sunni Arabs and you got Shiite. The Sunni and Shiite Muslim, they hate each other. They hate each other. They persecuted each other for, for hundreds of years. For China to be able to broker this peace agreement between those two factions is historic. And you know why? Because they're both joining the BRICS system. So now Saudi Arabia is no longer... Saudi Arabia is the number one oil exporter in the world. Okay? It is the number one in the world. What they have just basically done is pulled the carpet from underneath the United States and the global dominated currency. Challenging the global order of things. Friends, I I wish I could have time to just tell you the significance of that. Because what that will do is it's going to force us to act in a very undesirable way in order to maintain our global dominance. You'll see, you see it already taking place. You don't think that the, the, the ah, anyways, I can't get into politics here now. Um, friends, so, 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 so we, we see it in politics. We see it in, in, in military. I mean, the world is preparing for war. We're in a whole new, now, it's not the Cold War between the U.S. and Russia. Now, it is China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and those who are allied with that. I mean, it's very ominous. Now, look in the, mid, in, 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 the social, in the social realm. I mean, our socials ha- and, and, our, and our morals have degraded to such a degree. Just today, on our way here, we were coming down. I don't know what street it was. It was over down that way. There's a mural. There's a mural that my wife seen and she told me about. We're going to go back now on our way back to, uh, uh, and take a picture at it. This mural that has three interesting words, concepts of ideas. Unite, decolonize, and thrive. Now, that's another... I'll have to do a week of prayer to kind of break that, that concept up. But, but that was... Uh, that was, it had in really big letters, it had some letters in rainbow colors. Um, it, it, it started with L and it ended with plus, minus, division. You, are you fi- f- figuring out what I'm throwing down? Okay. What in the world does it mean, unite, decolonize, and thrive? Friends, we're, we're rewriting society. We're decomposing civilization. We are quickly, we have quickly, I mean almost imperceptibly, we've come to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where we're at. In in media, in pop culture, everything, everywhere, we're being told. And you can, all I can, I mean, I don't know about you, but every day as I look at what's happening in the world, I can hear the footsteps of an approaching God. But God's people, we're asleep. We don't realize. Our time is running short. The time to prepare for Jesus coming. And I'm not talking about stockpiling. I'm not talking about canning or jarring or going and plan. Look, you, you do what God places on your heart. But I'm talking about the heart preparation. I'm talking about the spiritual 
preparation, the spiritual conditioning to be able to go through a time of trouble such as there never was. This world, most people in this world don't know what's coming. You and I do. And God is desperate for you and I to do something to tell someone that hope is on the way. Hope is on the way. While this world seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket, we have great news that's called the gospel. There's hope beyond this world. All the world's scientists and all the world's, the richest, one of the richest persons in the world is Elon Musk. You know who he is? Have you heard of him? <laughs> you know he has a company by the name of SpaceX. Okay, you know what his longing desire is? He plans within the next three years to colonize Mars. He is putting all of his energies on getting man to Mars. Just about a week and a half ago, they launched the Starship rocket that exploded, but it actually was a great success, according to him, because now he knows the little tweaks that he needs to do in order for that thing to be flawless on its way to Mars. He plans to be on that ship, and he plans to die and be buried in Mars. That's what he wants, because he believes that mankind needs to become a multi-planetary species in less than 50 years. Why? Ask him. You, you, you can ask him yourself. It's all over the internet. He knows and he believes this world, some catastrophic event is going to happen and all life on this planet will be extinct. And so we need to become a multiplanetary species in order for our species to survive. He's doing everything to move to Mars. I got to agree with him. There is no hope on planet Earth. I have to agree with him. We need to recognize that we ought to be a multi-planetary species. I only disagree with him as to where. See, I don't believe God's plan is for us to colonize an inhospitable planet that is hostile to human life. I believe God offers us a home in a place far beyond the sun. But this is a home with rivers of living water. This is a place where the sun will, will not strike us by day. This is a place where the light of God's glory will shine perpetually. This is a place that has trees and, and the fruit of the tree of life where we will eat of that tree every month. Of that tree every month. I believe that God is calling us to a place far beyond Mars. It's, light, it's many, many light years away, but we'll get there in just about seven days. God has a plan of salvation for us. And it is not in a new political leader. It is not in the cure for cancer. It is not on the rise and, and, and the progress of artificial intelligence. That's more of a threat than a blessing. Friends, Jesus is coming soon. I'd like to leave you with two words that the servant of the Lord repeated three times. Get ready, get ready, get ready. If not now, when? Father in heaven, today, we are reminded that salvation is simple. It's to believe with our hearts and to confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. To testify of that reality to those who yet don't know you. Today, we are protected by the laws of this land. We have freedoms today that we will not always have. We have opportunities today that we will not always have. What we fail to do in times of peace and prosperity, we will have to accomplish under great hardship and crisis, most foreboding of circumstances. Please help us, Father, to arise out of our sleep, to trim our lamps, to have enough oil so that we can weather the long, dark, lonely night. 
I pray, Father, that you would bless this church, my dear friends, my dear, my dear brothers and sisters. Bless Pastor Tom as he is the shepherd of this church. And help us, Father, to do our part to prepare the people of Santa Cruz for your glorious return. The other is not an option. Please help us, guide us, lead us. And when you come, Father, may we all hear those wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant. Help us to this end. That is our prayer. We desperately need you now more than ever, for we pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen, amen, amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, 375. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we, we have heard you speaking to our hearts today. And we thank you for using your servant, Eddie and Monique. We're thankful, Lord, that the sun is still shining. And we're thankful that there is still time. And we're thankful, Lord, that you have given us a clear message, a clear calling, a clear invitation to join you in working for souls in this community. Lord, people who are dying for want of hope. Lord, may we be your messengers to say a word in due season. And so, Lord, we pray that you will stir our hearts, that we will work while the sun is still shining, that we won't have to look back and say, oh, if only I had said a word to my neighbor, my friend, my coworker, someone that I know. Lord, we want to work not on our own because we can do nothing apart from Christ, but we can do all things through Christ. So, Lord, 
May Christ live in our hearts and empower us to do the work you're calling us to do. Bless us to that end so that we may hear that admonition from your lips. Well done, good and faithful servant. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Invite everyone to please stay by. We have a potluck this afternoon. And, and I want you to get to know Eddie and his wife, Monique, a bit more. They're wonderful people. And I know you already know that, but, but getting to know them will be, uh, will be a real pleasure. And we're looking forward to that day this fall when we will have an evangelistic series. And, and, the, and so we've chosen this time for Eddie to be here to, to, to wake us up, to, to, to hear a message, to look forward to a time when we will see results of sharing our faith. There will not be a lot of, of results if we don't share with our friends and our neighbors. We find out that the best people to hear the gospel in an evangelistic series are people who have already become our friends because we have shared with them. So let's work together and look to, forward to that time this fall when we can, well, when Eddie can, we can hear more of what we heard today. And you won't want to miss it, and you won't want your friends to miss it. God bless you on this Sabbath day.